got ourselves kind of a sunny December day here. It's not nearly as cold as last time I made a video for y'all. And that last video was kind of all about seeing what is a little bit sensitive to the cold. But of course, we still have warm days in the winter time too. It's December right now, but it's nice and sunny. So the plants in the gardens and around town that are still growing, really enjoy this nice, you know, sunny, kind of mild weather. So today, I'm just gonna go around to a few gardens, and like I told you last week, since this is our last video of the semester, right, the end of the year is coming, um, I'm gonna do something kind of fun. I'll do a little bit of harvesting, maybe leave some fresh veggies for some of your teachers, and then I'm gonna show y'all how to cook a vegetable that likes the cold weather that can be grown in the winter. But first, before I head over and show you all about harvesting, I'd like you to just think back. I know it's been many weeks of the semester. Um, I've sent you a whole lot of videos about different things. And of course, it's been just a really strange year with COVID-19 and everything. Many of us are learning and teaching virtually. Um, and it's just, it's been an odd year. So I think it's good to kind of reflect um, even though so much was different, I really hope that y'all did enjoy the videos that I sent you. And I'd like you to just think for a minute, see if you can think of some memories. It could be something you enjoyed watching, um, maybe if you did some of the activities I introduced to you, um, just something that you enjoyed from this fall. I know there are a few things that I discovered while I was making videos that just maybe I hadn't taken the time to stop and look much at. I know just last week, kind of looking at what plants survive the winter and what ones don't, I was reminded of a few, um, just some of the flowering plants around where I live. Um, I noticed some of them didn't make it, but others were fine. Another thing I really enjoyed and discovered completely new to me was um, when I made the different sweet potatoes, I learned that you don't really have to let a sweet potato sit and cure like I've been told. Um, turns out the one that was fresh out of the ground was just as sweet as the one from the grocery store. So that was pretty cool to find out since I grow them every year. So yeah, just see if you can think of something that maybe was new to you that you discovered. All right, so now I'm gonna show y'all some winter vegetables that are growing. All right, so here we are. As we can see, it's winter time in the garden. See those okra stalks look pretty dead, but there's a lot of green still popping out. So like I said, there are some winter vegetables that really don't mind the cold. So we've got some collard greens, some cabbages, a little bit of kale. The bugs weren't too good to the kale and some chard, which is kind of, it survived, but the cold kind of zapped it a little bit. So today I'm gonna be showing you how to harvest a couple of these, and then I will be cooking up one of them and show you a simple little recipe you can enjoy. So when you're looking at um, cabbages versus other kinds of greens like collards, they're actually harvested two different ways. So big sort of, um, bundles of greens like this uh, you can just break off leaves and make a bunch of them and leave the plant growing some people call that continual harvest right because you can just continue to pick them and there's another sort of fun little phrase for it uh, I've also heard cut and come again you can cut it you can come back again and it'll still be growing as long as you leave some of the leaves in the middle right so you can kind of pick them from around the edges like this. A little holes in them from bugs, but um, but yeah, that's the idea, and it'll keep on growing. Now cabbages, they're a little different. So the cabbage part that we eat is called the head, and it is this round part right in the center. Now once we that's the good part, right? That's the part we like. So once we get rid of the cabbage head, um, the plant is no longer gonna be growing because all the small leaves in there will be cut. 
Um, so they are a one-time single harvest. Now another thing with cabbages, um, sometimes you see they're kind of tough. You can't just break them. So sometimes you need to carefully um, find a, like a garden tool, um, clippers or a knife or something and actually cut the cabbage off. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate that for y'all really quick. Okay, so these big outer leaves, they get to be kind of tough. Um, we don't necessarily eat them, but some people like to leave them on because it looks nice, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just cut the cabbage head right where we want it. So just gonna kind of gently cut through it until you hear it crack. And there we are, nice little cabbage head. So we'll save that and um, I'm going to show you all how to make um, a tasty little simple recipe using some fresh cabbage from the garden. Nothing tastes better than when it is fresh out of the ground, believe me. Alright, let's check out a couple more things in the garden and then um, I'll take it to the kitchen and see how we prepare it. Okay, I wanted to give you all one more cabbage harvesting tip. So see this one, um, it doesn't look so good, right? It's kind of brownish and yellow on there. Not really like something we'd want to eat, but let me show you a little trick. So again, I'm just going to carefully, um, carefully cut this cabbage. All right, that cut off pretty easily. Now any sort of yucky looking leaves, you can just begin to kind of peel them off. Now you'll see there's a little hole where maybe a bug got in. But watch what happens as we continue to peel off these leaves. Think about what is happening to the finished product here. It's definitely getting a little smaller, right? Because we're removing some layers from it. But we are also getting rid of those parts that have begun to sort of go bad. And then look, we have like probably 99% of the cabbage looks perfect now. There's this one little spot here, but I think what I can do is when I'm chopping it up, I'll just cut that part out. Perfect, so we've got a really nice big cabbage here. It didn't look so good when it was in the ground, but there's always tricks you can do when you're harvesting. Um, just peel those outer leaves off, and chances are it's perfect underneath. All right, everyone. So I've got this lovely school garden cabbage back here in my kitchen, and I'm going to show y'all a quick, simple way that I like to cook them. So first things first, remember that uh, kitchen tools can be dangerous. I will be using um, a sharp knife today to cut the cabbage. Um, so please, if you decide to try this recipe, um, have an adult a uh, parent, someone in your family uh, who is comfortable in the kitchen, um, please be sure to have supervision or better yet, just have a parent do the cutting for you um, if, if you don't have experience cutting things in the kitchen. Um, so the first thing you want to do when you cut something like a cabbage, um, you see it's got this thick kind of hard bottom part where it connected to the plant. So I like to just kind of cut that bottom piece off. And then if you remember, there's still a little brown spot here. So I'm just gonna kind of carefully cut out a layer there and sort of see how deep it goes. And perfect, it was just on the surface. So now the rest of the cabbage, um, let's see. First, I'm gonna cut it in half. This is where you have to be a little careful because sometimes Sometimes it doesn't want to cut all in one smooth motion. All right, so now we have two halves and it's really easy then to just place it face down and then we can start to kind of finely chop it. So I like to chop a few strips along lengthwise and then turn it 90 degrees, a quarter turn, and then just kind of cut it into small pieces and that will help it cook nice and quick.
So now that I've got the cabbage chopped up, I do want to wash it because when the cabbage grows, all those little layers that we see here are individual leaves. And sometimes you can get things like sand and dirt from the garden trapped between them. So I'm gonna show you a trick for washing your cabbage really well so you don't get any pieces of dirt in there. So instead of washing all these little pieces of cabbage under running water, what I like to do is get a pot of water like this and just drop them all in here. <clears throat> this is how I like to wash really any kind of greens. And here's why the trick works. So in the soil where we grow things, there can be little pieces of dirt. And most of that dirt is either sand or maybe a little bit of clay. But basically all that dirt, when you put it in water, it sinks to the bottom. So when you wash them like this, the water gets all in there in between all the leaves. And what few pieces of dirt there might be left will sink to the bottom of the pot. So then, basically just gonna take the greens out of the water and anything that was washed off will remain at the bottom of the pot and you won't get it in your food. All right, so now that I've got the cabbage washed and ready to go, we'll go ahead and get to cooking. Now this is a really simple recipe, like I said. One of the things I like about it though is that you can customize it however you like to season stuff. So there's lots of room to experiment, but this is just a quick, healthy way to cook cabbage or really any wintertime greens. All right, so as you can see, I've got a pan on the stove here that's heating up. So what we're gonna do with the cabbage is saute or stir fry it. And basically that just means cook it in a frying pan with a little bit of oil. So the oil is what we'll be cooking the vegetables in rather than water like you would when you boil. So I'm just gonna add a splash of vegetable oil to the pan and let that heat up for another minute or so. So once that oil is good and hot, you can add your greens. I'll go ahead and add some cabbage. And you can hear it popping. That's from the water that was on the outside of it from washing. When it hits that hot oil, it splatters because that water wants to boil. So an important thing to do is stir it around. That's why some people call this stir frying. It keeps the cabbage pieces on the bottom from burning. So you wanna very often stir it or move it around. And I'm gonna turn my heat down a little bit from high to sort of medium. So as cabbage cooks, you start to see some of the white and green leaves turn a little bit slightly see-through, almost a little bit clear. If you're cooking something else, um, like collards or kale, they will turn bright green as they start to cook. And basically, um, once you start to heat them up, it's kind of up to you. You know, if you want them more tender, um, cook them for a little bit longer. If you don't mind a little crunch to them, then don't leave them in the pan as long. One thing I really like about this recipe is it's very affordable and you don't need a lot of fancy ingredients. Really all you need is your vegetable, some sort of oil to cook it in or butter, and then whatever seasonings you want. Even if it's just salt and pepper, I think that's pretty tasty. But today I'm gonna kind of make it um, a little bit Asian style to go with some fried rice that I'm making. So I'm gonna put in a little low sodium soy sauce, a little bit of sesame oil, and some red chili pepper flakes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. All right, I just added my seasonings. Now I'm gonna mix them around a little bit. If you're using something like soy sauce, you do kind of want to be careful because sometimes it can be really salty and a little bit goes a long way. You can always add more seasonings at the table when you're done. But look, now that's starting to cook and they're all getting seasoned in there really nicely. All right, let's see, make sure I don't burn myself. Hmm, that tastes pretty good. It's still got a little bit of crunch to it, which I like, and it's actually kind of spicy from the red pepper flakes, and it's not overly salty, so I can always add more seasoning when I eat it at the table. 
All right, so look how easy that was. With just a small cabbage from the garden, I made a quick, delicious stir fry that's gonna be a great side dish for dinner tonight using only a tiny bit of very affordable ingredients that you can get at the grocery store. And I even have um, plenty of cabbage still left over. I didn't cook it all, so I'd say it was a success. All right, I'm gonna enjoy dinner and I got a few more words for you before we close out the semester here. Well, all right, I hope y'all enjoyed the cooking demo using the cabbage from the garden. Really, it's such a versatile way of cooking. You can use it for almost any vegetable and like I was saying, use pretty much any seasonings you like. I just thought y'all might enjoy getting to see some of the produce from the garden this year cooked up. Well, anyway, this will be the end of my video series for the semester. I really hope y'all have enjoyed um, getting to watch them and hopefully do some of the activities I introduced you to. I know it's been a weird year not getting to go outside in the garden like usual, but I look forward to y'all getting to come out and see the spring garden sometime next semester when things are a little more back to normal. Well, until then, I hope everyone has a safe and happy holiday season. I hope you do a little bit of cooking, Maybe spend some time outdoors if it's a nice day. And Happy New Year. I'll see you in 2021. Bye-bye.